John Wu has just released a new update to Majisk that improves SE Linux handling. It adds support for Android 13's generic kernel image format. It revamps the root permission management system, enforces root manager APK signature verification, and more. Today, I'll cover everything that's changed in this new release of Majisk while also going over how I update my devices to the latest version. So the biggest change seems to be the work that John has done to rewrite the Majisk INIT software. For those who are unaware, this is the binary that is responsible for replacing the stock INIT process. This binary does all of the heavy lifting as being the first program to run, and it injects the Majisk service into the INIT.RC while also patching the SE Linux policies. This new work allows for a brand new injection mechanism, which in turn resolves a majority of the incompatibilities that it's had with SE Linux. We see this new Majisk INIT service now supports the Oculus Go, while also bringing in support for Android 13's JKIs on the Google Pixel 6. There's also been some work on the Majisk boot implementation that now fixes some VB meta extraction issues. This release of Majisk to version 25.0 also comes with a number of security enhancements for the Majisk SU management system. There's a fix for a possible crash in Majisk D. There is proper package management and detection. And the system can now prevent malicious UID reuse attacks. There's even been some work done to add root manager APK signature verification, which will help to protect users from modified versions of the actual Majisk application. You can read over the rest of the change log here, but I'll also be including this link in the video description below for anyone who is curious to read through the official change log. And now that we know what is included in this update, let's go and update Majisk to the latest version. So you may or may not have received the notification telling you that there is a Majisk update available. But we can go into the Majisk application itself and we're first going to update the application. We can see that that has closed the application because it was updated and we're going to get that notification telling us it is updated and that we can go ahead and open the application. Now that the Majisk app has been updated, we're going to update the Majisk binaries and we're going to do that by tapping the update button up here at the top. We're going to choose the direct install option and then tap the let's go button. Now this process could take a few seconds. We're gonna see the exact things that are being done here. But once everything is complete, we're gonna get a blue reboot, reboot button down here at the bottom. And we're going to tap that button to start the restart process. Now this boot back into Android should not take any longer than usual. We haven't installed any major over-the-air updates and we have not done any factory data resets. All we have done is updated the Majisk application and then after that we updated the Majisk binaries. As long as everything goes smoothly, 
we can see we're booted back into Android right at the lock screen. And once we have booted back into the operating system, we can go into the Magisk application to make sure that there are not any more updates waiting for us. So that's all of the changes that have been added to version 25 of Magisk, along with the full process for how I update Magisk to the latest stable version.